Bangor. From the great north woods to the rockbound coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxbangor.com, more people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, lawmakers may increase the fines for people caught texting and driving. Plus, we'll join the send-off for Maine Army Guard troops as they deploy to the Middle East. And we'll meet a brewer woman who makes incredible dollhouse furniture that helps sparks that helps sparks the imagination. Good morning, and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for tuning in today. Not a bad day out there on tap. We'll see some sunshine as the day goes along. In fact, it's supposed to get up around 40 degrees today. Right. We did have a little snow all overnight, so you might find some slippery conditions uh, here in the Bangor area. The roads were pretty much just wet because the crews have been out doing their things. I found I-95 to be a mess. I saw one person I was off say, the road. Yeah, so 395 was the exception on my way in. Yep. It was still pretty slushy out there. Uh, I imagine the road crews will have it cleaned up before Definitely. you know it. But yep. I saw him out this morning. Yeah, so. j- just take it easy. Absolutely. Here's Devin Biggs. And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Century 21 Queen City Real Estate. Service in the area for over 70 years. Experience matters. All right, here we go this morning. We are watching out for some small crowd advisories that are in effect. And this will last until about the 1 a.m. time frame. As we head towards your Thursday, the Wi-Fi is still remaining active along the coast with another system that has been passing through. And for now, things are starting to quiet down at the moment. So here's all the activity right here tracking from the west. Going toward the east, so we got some snow last night and early this morning. Now a lot of this is starting to calm down now, and we'll see the clouds break up today to reveal plenty of sunshine and temperatures that should be rather decent today too. In fact, we'll be melting a little bit more snow with some with some warmer temperatures that will begin to move in soon. So decreasing clouds will be the general idea today. We'll be under a mostly clear sky later on tonight, so it'll be very nice to get outside and do things overall as long as you bundle up, of course, but the weather will remain calm. But as for the wind, it might be gusty from time to time. That might be the only obstacle, but even this will start to back off, especially as we head towards Thursday afternoon. So your forecast for today, lower 40s today, partly cloudy, rather mild and breezy out there. The northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 15 degrees, mostly clear, still a little breezy out there. Northwest wind at about 20 miles per hour. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, decreasing clouds, temperatures reaching for 40. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. All right, we'll see you a little later on. Thank you, Devin. Well, in this morning's news, two people are in critical condition following a bad crash in the town of Wallagrass. State police say it was around 3.50 Tuesday afternoon when 18-year-old Angel Bubar of Washburn was attempting to pull onto the Sly Brook Road from a private roadway. He ended up pulling directly into the path of a pickup driven by 21-year-old C.J. Rochelleau of Fort Kent. Rochelo was unable to avoid the vehicle, and the two vehicles collided. Bubar and his 15-year-old female passenger were both seriously injured and were eventually airlifted to Northern Light Hospital in Bangor. They remained in critical but stable condition, and Rochelo was treated for minor injuries and released. The investigation into that crash is ongoing. A deadly train crash in Biddeford leaves one person dead. Officials say a 27-year-old woman somehow ended up in the path of the Amtrak train early Tuesday morning. Johnny Maffey reports. An Amtrak train stopped here on Main Street in Biddeford this morning, blocking the road for hours after what Amtrak describes as a trespasser incident. Biddeford police say a train hit and killed a 27-year-old woman just before 6. It was Amtrak Downeaster Train 680 heading towards Boston, carrying around 30 passengers. A neighbor says some passengers were moved to a bus around 7 back to Saco. According to Amtrak and a passenger who messaged me, the rest remained on board until authorities cleared the scene, then continued on to Wells Station to hop on later trains. Neighbors heard the commotion. I heard the train stop around 5 a.m. and um, looked out the window and was hoping that it wasn't another person who had been hit. I flew really bad because it happened right here and I saw the lights come on on the train and I knew that there was probably going to be evacuating them for some reason. I feel bad for the commuter people too that had to be on the train when that happened. Main Street reopened by 10 a.m. Amtrak and CSX, who owns the railroad, assisted Biddeford police in the investigation which is ongoing. In other news this morning, two people lost their home and their dog in a house fire in Lowell. Multiple fire departments responded to 693 Webb Cove Drive in Lowell around 530 yesterday. 
Howland Fire Captain Eric St. Cyr says firefighters arrived to find that log cabin fully engulfed in flames. One person suffered minor burns, but both occupants were able to escape. Their dog was not able to make it out. Captain St. Cyr says they believe the fire started in the kitchen. He says one of the occupants was cooking at the time and left the kitchen briefly, only to return to find the room engulfed in flames. The Maine legislature is considering a bill that would increase the penalty for those who get pulled over for texting and driving. Our Matthew Jaroncic has the story. Since Maine's hands-free law took effect in 2019, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has reported more than 3,000 violations. In an effort to cut down on distracted driving, the Maine legislature is looking to up the cost for offenders. A lot of people don't understand that, oh, I'm going to stop light, I'm going to stop sign, I can be on my phone. No, you cannot. You cannot be on your phone just because you're stopped in traffic. It's still distracted driving. Democratic Representative Paige Ziegler became a sponsor of the bill after a volunteer firefighter told him an increase in fines would reduce crashes. Should it pass, those who get pulled over for distracted driving will have to pay $500 for a first offense and $1,000 for a second offense. Under current law, the first offense results in an $85 fee and the second is $325. Some Mainers agree that the bill would be effective. It's a significant problem and it doesn't seem like the, the current fine is uh, as much of a, a restriction on people's habits. Others don't think it will make much of a difference. I don't think it's a dollar amount of a fine that would inhibit or prohibit uh, people from driving distracted. They already do it. And the worst thing possible that could happen is that you injure or kill somebody. Those we spoke to all agreed distracted driving is a problem. People will lose their lives with people texting and driving. There's so many stories out there of people texting and driving and running into somebody or killing somebody. In Bangor, Matthew Jaroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Senate Republicans continued their weekly press conference series on Tuesday by addressing the possibility of reforming existing welfare guidelines. Proposed goals include residency and work requirements in the hopes of promoting the transition back to independence. Republicans are pushing to limit the duration of benefits on a case-by-case -case basis rather than what Senator Eric Brakey calls a one-size-fits-all approach. The whole concept is to get people back to work and not keep them dependent on a system that that has really failed them in that effort. Teachers, legislators say they are hoping to increase child care resources to help parents get back to work. Employers, workers and Maine lawmakers rallied in support of expanding the state's paid family and medical leave program. A.J. Douglas heard from advocates about how broadening this program could benefit Mainers from all walks of life. I think it really um, is one of the most transformational policies that we can do for all Mainers. The Maine Paid Family Leave Coalition is committed to developing a paid family and medical leave benefit program. On Tuesday, members discussed the limitations surrounding the existing paid family leave criteria. Currently, Maine's paid family leave insurance benefit requires an employee to contribute to the program through their earnings for a set time frame, resulting in many Mainers failing to qualify for the paid benefit. I'd like to take a few moments to share with you the unquestionable importance of Maine's 181,000 unpaid family caregivers. Both employees and small business employers addressed the need for the insurance benefit so more essential workers would qualify for paid leave. AmericanProgress.org reports only 20 percent of U.S. private sector workers have access to paid family leave through an employer. Frontline workers and care workers, from grocery store workers to health care providers whose essential work supports us all to thrive. The committee's report proposes that the funding for the program would be split between employers and employees with a 25 percent employer, 75 percent employee split or a 50-50 split option. Wage replacement is recommended to range between 80 to 90 percent. As a small employer, this is something I'm very cognizant of, of the cost of the program, but I've also seen the hard aspect of recruiting staff 
any employer right now, if you talk to them, it is a very hard hiring economy. The new paid family leave program would cover birth, care of a loved one, and recovery from personal illness and injury. The Maine Paid Leave Coalition continues to work to develop a statewide paid leave program as they collect signatures for a referendum question that would be on the ballot in 2023. In Augusta, A.J. Douglas, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. There was a heartfelt send-off for a group of Bangor Army National Guard members as they headed out for a year of deployment. David Letford was there and shares their story. Tuesday morning, 36 Maine soldiers from the 3rd Battalion, 142nd Aviation Regiment were sent overseas to provide air support to Operation Inherent Resolve and Operation Spartan Shield in the Middle East. At their send-off ceremony, letters from Senators Angus King and Susan Collins were read to the group to demonstrate support from the state. You have trained with the utmost dedication. You have the skills to carry out your mission, and you have exceptional leadership. You have the highest ideals of America and of American America's armed forces in your hearts. According to Maine Army National Guard officials, the last Army aviation unit to deploy from Maine was in 2018, when Company G, 3rd Battalion, 126th Aviation Regiment, was sent to support operations in Afghanistan. Warrant Officer Thomas Hayden, who says he has not deployed in over a decade, shared his thoughts on the important things to remember when duty calls. Family is, it doesn't apply to location, so we're still a family even if I'm over there. Family means that nobody gets left behind. Members of the 3142 and their families say they agree with the sentiment and shared their feelings about the deployment. It's just kind of overwhelming, heavy, um, but also definitely a lot of pride. We're very proud of all of them and what they do. It's an honor, yeah. Um, a lot of people don't get to do this, so it's a privilege. The opportunity to deploy, I guess, is just kind of the ultimate achievement. Thank you to everyone else going, and thank you all for your service. And we'll, be, we'll be waiting back for you when you get home. In Bangor, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. That's never easy. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be tough. And yeah. they'll be spending the next year, I believe, in Kuwait, um, yeah. s um, providing some air services there and everything. So we wish them the best of luck. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, the time now is 612. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, we'll join members of the Coast Guard as they break up the ice on the Penobscot River. But first, a check of our forecast. Today looks like a partly cloudy day. We'll, we'll be breezy and warm. The highs near 40 degrees. Clear and breezy tonight with lows dropping down to 15. Tomorrow, Pretty much the same kind of weather, another partly cloudy, breezy day, not bad at all, with highs right around 40 degrees. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow, just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Get a Ford F-150 XLT truck with 0% APR financing for 36 months plus $1,000 bonus cash. See your local Ford dealer. Between work, school, and laundry, who has time to make dinner? Don't worry, you've got this in the bag. With Hannaford's easy, time-saving meal solutions, a fresh, delicious dinner is just minutes away. Hannaford Supermarkets. Hello, Eastern Maine. Watch You Bet Your Life weekdays at 10 a.m. here on ABC7. It's a sad state of affairs when you have to sue your son. But he didn't have a proper upbringing. I was a dominatrix. Wait, I'm sorry. A dominatrix? What, uh, what? You need me to explain that to you. Hot Bench. Wednesday at 3 on ABC7. Although some Mainers are excited about the ice that was brought by last week's cold snap, there are a few people who are making sure it doesn't overstay its welcome. Devin Dagnall explains. On Tuesday, the U.S. Coast Guard used three 60-foot tugboats and the 140-foot Thunder Bay to break up ice along the Penobscot River. Every year during the winter months, the Coast Guard sends ships from Bucksport to Bangor and back to break up ice and make way for commerce on the river and to avoid flooding. 
The warmer weather this season has kept the ice and ships at bay, but the most recent cold snap quickly changed that. So for the eye thickness today, we're looking about 8 to uh, 12 inches of ice. Uh, a few places we're jamming up and seeing over a foot of ice, uh, which is pretty significant for how quickly that formed. We were ice-free last week, and uh, seeing 8 inches form in, in a single weekend is uh, pretty crazy. Lieutenant Dan Jones of the U.S. Coast Guard says although ice breaking looks like hard work, it's more enjoyable than it seems. Oh, it's super fun. Yeah, we, love, we live for this. This is our Super Bowl. Um, everyone else will be watching it. We'll be doing it here. <laughs> to keep things interesting on the trip, all of the boats have a friendly competition to cut the most ice. But, according to Jones, it's all a little one-sided. They try their best, um, but they've only got about 400 horsepower and under 100 tons, so they can... They can do what they want to do, but at 660 tons of 25,000 horsepower, it's a bit of a one pony show. <laughs> Jones says despite the warmer temperatures that are expected, the Coast Guard will make the same trip every other week until the end of winter. In Bangor, Devin Dagnall, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Sounds like they're kind of proud of what they're doing, Sounds too. Fun. Yeah, yeah, as they should be. Yeah. Well, Holden Police Department gave away free trash bags as part of its first Trash Tag Tuesday. Trash tags are usually picked up at the town office. Residents must have one on their garbage bins in order to have their trash picked up. Yesterday, residents had the opportunity to come into the Holden PD and pick up one for free. Holden Police Chief Chris Greeley says he bought the tags with the remaining money from the town's 25 Days of Kindness program. We just completed the sixth year in a row of that. It was a record-breaking year in terms of donations and community support. And we have remaining funds, and, and we're just trying to find ways to, to spend those monies. And today, was uh, the trash tags was one of those examples. Well, those who picked up trash tags were also given a small gift bag also. They've done all kinds of neat things with that program. I saw recently they were giving away free oil, yeah. um, heating oil to people, things like that, Christmas presents at Christmas time. So they talk about, a to, uh, you know, a progressive police department. Right, and they yeah. found a way to use it to help everybody. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We well, love it. Yeah, well, the time now is 617. After the break, we'll hear about the construction plans slated for some of Acadia National Park's busiest roads. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. Continues. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Branch Pond Computers, Cormier Bus Service, Kelly Joe State Farm Insurance Agent, Shear Attraction Salon, Tilton's Auction, and Whitney Supermarket. With AARP Rewards, anyone can earn and redeem points. They're ready for you. That's 300 points. And help their money live longer. Get started for free today. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. Construction projects are slated for some of Acadia National Park's busiest roads. The Cadillac Mountain Road will be closed for construction between February 28th and May 10th. Because of Maine's winter climate, it might not be possible for the repaving and culvert replacement to be fully completed by mid-May. There is a possibility of temporary road closures as the project is finished. Other sections of the Park Loop Road may experience single-lane closures throughout the early spring. The National Park Service says to expect traffic delays and plan your visits accordingly. 
The Orono Land Trust is finding new ways to attract visitors to their neck of the woods. Since last fall, the group has been using trail cameras to monitor a wide variety of local wildlife. And now they're using the pictures to both encourage people to get out in nature and demonstrate a need to protect Maine's animals. The group's newsletter shows what animals they've caught on the camera so far. While the trust is known for offering over 4,000 acres of public trails and land for Mainers to use, President Adam Toothaker says that the group is making an effort to show their focus on conservation. I, re I really think from mental health to physical health, humans need areas like this. But also on top of it, the, the habitat is, is unbelievably important. You know, you could wipe all the humans out. Everybody would do fine. But if you wipe bees out, we're done. On February 26th, the Trust is opening a new Caribou Bog Outdoor Center in Orono. It will also hold a fundraiser at Orono Brewing Company to support their conservation efforts. Eighth graders from the Bangor area and around the state visited John Baptist High School yesterday. School officials say their step-up day is one of the biggest days of the year. The visiting students get a chance to see all the school has to offer and decide if they would like to attend John Baptist. We draw students from more than 25 main towns and more than 12 international countries. So our student body is remarkably diverse. Um, they, they have a lot of differences. What they have in common is they love school. 230 students attended the event. Officials say they expect around 120 of them will become John Baptist freshmen next fall. Exciting time for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Best of luck to them. I hope they choose wherever they want to go. Well, the time now is 621. Let's get a full look at that weather forecast with Devin. All righty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Century 21 Queen City Real Estate, servicing the area for over 70 years. Experience matters. All righty, small craft advisories are in effect until about 1 a.m. As we head towards your Thursday along the coast, things are still active this morning. That's causing some gusty winds and some active surf as a result. That will continue tonight before it starts to back off early tomorrow morning. But for now, we had some snow that's recently passed through, so we got a little bit out of this. And now this is starting to get out of here. And now the clouds are going to break up, and pretty much what's fallen is going to melt. It's going to be seeing temperatures reaching above freezing today. In fact, getting close to 40 degrees as a result. So you know this cold front's moving through. High pressure will be moving in, pushing the clouds out of here. And that sunshine will allow temperatures to boost up into the lower 40s, so that will feel rather nice. So if you Cast for today, decreasing clouds will be the general idea. We'll be under a mostly clear sky later on tonight and even through tomorrow. Looking pretty good to start things off with a lot of sunshine, but more clouds on the way for the afternoon period as another system starts to approach by about 6 o'clock or so. And this one could bring us some snow that could switch over to a little bit of rain as we head towards early Friday morning. Here's a bigger look at that picture, though. So it's going to move in from the southwest to the north and east by about 6 o'clock or so. We'll start seeing us moving in, switching over to rain as temperatures will rise overnight to above freezing. But notice by Friday afternoon, at least through Friday morning, we'll still see a few rain showers possible. But Friday afternoon, this will all start to back off. And by Friday night, we will be done with that system. So it will be a quick mover. Not a lot of snow with this right now. Maybe a one to two inches in most areas before we're all finished up. You have to go further off towards the north and see maybe up to three to four, maybe up to five inches in a few spots. But not as much over our area with that transition over to rain. And speaking of rainfall as well, this takes into account any, any snow that falls down. And of course, this takes into, the, into account the water equivalent of that. So in general, a half inch of water in general before we're all finished up. So not a lot of stuff to get excited about here, but a little bit more water on the way. With the snowpack we have on the ground already, can't rule out some flash flooding in some areas either. Six to ten foot wave heights being noted right now. This is why we have small crowd advisories in effect at this time. Your forecast for today, 40 degrees, partly cloudy, mild and breezy. Northwest wind at about 25 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 15 degrees, mostly clear and breezy out there again. Northwest wind at about 20 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 38 degrees, mostly cloudy again. The west wind at about 5 miles per hour. All righty, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Century 21 Queen City Real Estate. Of course, we have that wintry mix switching over to all rain Thursday night. By Friday morning, a few morning rain showers that will be done by Friday afternoon. Temperatures reaching for the lower 50s. That'll be rather mild. Mid-30s by Saturday with a partly cloudy sky. And partly cloudy again on Sunday. Highs in the upper 30s. 
Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining and start saving now. Quang Li Chinese Restaurant in Pittsfield has a wide selection of tasty dishes, including poo for two with rice, general tau chicken, sesame chicken, beef teriyaki, and more. They are just minutes from Interstate 95 Pittsfield exit. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Living in Maine means long, cold winters and hot, humid summers. Whatever the weather, Bangor Heat Pumps is your solution. Open 24-7, Bangor Heat Pumps takes care of you at home or at work. We operate statewide and service all brands and models. Understanding moving can be stressful. We will help move any units you may have. We offer a veterans discount in our home with a capeless hero discount. Visit us online at bangorheatpumpsllc.com or call or text us at 307-7746. Bangor Heat Pumps. LeBron James, Michael Strahan. You're on the verge of breaking one of the most iconic records in sports. What does that mean to you? The morning after LeBron makes history, see the interview with LeBron. Oh, my goodness. Only on Good Morning America. Aris Lumber is locally owned and has been serving the Penquis region for more than 50 years. See them for all your projects, big or small. Customer service is their number one priority. And with a full line of lumber and hardware items, they can also deliver to your job site. Harris Lumber, Milo. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Boynton's Greenhouse, Brickhouse Kitchen, Chestnut Street Automotive, LLC, Nicotow Stove Shop, Northwoods Real Estate, and Stearns Lumber Company. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Welcome back, everyone. President Biden praised the American story of progress and resilience as he delivered his second State of the Union address last night. He urged the politically divided Congress to work with him to finish the job on a host of issues, including tackling inflation and building back the American middle class. But his speech also sparked some tense moments in the chamber with several outbursts from Republicans on issues like Medicare and Social Security. ABC's Faith Abube is on Capitol Hill with the latest. Mr. Speaker, the President of the United States. President Biden kicked off his second State of the Union address calling for a unity agenda, highlighting how bipartisanship has led to several accomplishments in his first two years in office. Democrats and Republicans came together. You came together to pass one in a, gen one in a generation, once in a generation infrastructure law, building bridges connecting our nation and our people. The president's speech prompting multiple rounds of applause from both sides of the political aisle as he talked about issues like public safety, spotlighting the parents of Tyree Nichols in the room. Just as every cop when they pin on that badge in the morning has a right to be able to go home at night, so does everybody else out there. But the warm welcome by the politically divided Congress quickly turning into a rowdy reception. Some Republicans want Medicare and Social Security to sunset. I'm not saying it's a majority. <laughs> Anybody who doubts it, contact my office. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy of the proposal. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene among those seen calling the president a liar. President Biden grinning and engaging with the jeering Republicans. Well, I'm glad to see you. No, I tell you, I, I enjoy conversion. But apparently, it's not going to be a problem. The president's address touching on a host of issues, including a call for an assault weapons ban, abortion rights, funding for Ukraine, policing and immigration reform, as well as his administration's effort to cool inflation, urging Republicans to join him to finish the job. If we could work together the last Congress, there's no reason we can't work together and find consensus on important things in this Congress as well. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders delivering the Republican response. The Biden administration seems more interested in woke fantasies than the hard reality Americans face every day. And a source tells ABC News White House officials were very happy with the president's performance. He was welcomed back with cheers and high fives. 
We turn to dramatic images of rescues in the rubble after the historic earthquake on the Turkey-Syria border. The death toll overnight approaching 8,000 people. Tens of thousands more are still feared trapped. ABC's Lionel Moyes has the latest. This morning, American search and rescue teams arriving in Turkey to join the around-the-clock search for earthquake survivors in the bitter cold. New videos showing teams racing to save people buried in the rubble. Oh, God, this man digging through the rubble searching for his young daughter, Noor, buried in debris. The rescuer saying, your father is here. Don't be scared. Noor, please look at me here. Talk to your father. Noor looking up and seeing her dad. She was finally freed after nearly 24 hours. For countless other families, immense grief. This father, who lost his 15-year-old daughter, refused to let go of her hand. And perhaps the most dramatic rescue so far, this newborn found alive, crying. The child's mother gave birth while buried underneath a collapsed apartment building. Sadly, she did not make it. More than 70 countries and 14 international organizations have now offered aid to Turkey, but the concern is growing that Syria, ravaged by years of civil war, is getting far less help due in part to economic sanctions and political conflict. An estimated 23 million people have been affected by Monday's earthquake. Many people here in the U.S. are asking how they can help. For information on how to donate, visit unicefusa.org slash ABC News. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. Meanwhile, a fire in the generator room of a Massachusetts hospital triggered a massive evacuation of patients and staff. We have more now from ABC affiliate WCVB. This afternoon, a convoy of dozens of ambulances brought in to evacuate Brockton Hospital. The fire chief here says a fire started in the transformer room in the basement around 7 this morning, knocking out the power. The computer shut down. Yeah. And then, you know, the generator back, um, the generators came back on and then the generators went out. Yeah, everything and went everything black. everything went pitch black. Those who work here say smoke and fumes started to fill the building. Plastic, burning, smoke, it's nasty. It took firefighters some time to try to put out the fire due to the risk of electrocution. Because of the way the power was coming into the building from the emergency generators as well, that had to be shut off as well so we could put the fire out. Since there was no power to the building, the chief gave the order to evacuate the nearly 200 sick and injured patients. We saw three babies. We just got discharged. As well as several people on gurneys, one after another getting taken out. Others walking on their own power. Doing okay? As good as I can be. Right now, those patients are being brought to other area hospitals and care centers, while crews try to get the power restored and get things back to normal here. But luckily, no one was hurt. Everybody's alive, thank God. That's one of those things that they hope will never happen, but they right. train for it. And it looks like they, um, they carried out their evacuation plan to the T yesterday. Training paid yeah. off. Yep, everything was handled as it could be. Yeah. Oh. Well, still to come here on the second half of our show, we'll check out a local artist who's handcrafting miniature furniture sets. That and more as Good Morning Maine continues. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Booth Electric and United Energy, Coffee Break Cafe, JC's Variety, Leo and Sons Auto Repair, McCusick Petroleum Company, and Prouty Auto Body. Having a hard time finding that perfect gift? No worries. From now until February 14th, Quality Jewelers is offering one-stop shopping for all your Valentine's Day needs. Every purchase will come with a bonus gift, and our gift package makes shopping this Valentine's Day easy. You'll get chocolates, a stuffed animal, and a Valentine's Day card to fill out. If you're looking for the easiest way to really impress that special someone, look no further than Quality Jewelers. Quality Jewelers, locally owned and operated, Penobscot Plaza, Bangor. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone and my, my arch. 
I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe, and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. After 15 years as a journalist, I've learned it's important to grab the reader's attention with a catchy headline. Here's mine. Local woman ruins own life. So you doing okay? Yeah. I got coffee in my bra. Oh, and I might have to start driving Uber on the weekends, but uh, not on the car, so maybe they'll let me carry people. I know I could be more valuable to this paper as an investigative journalist. Mm. I don't think I follow. Also, that jacket is gross. I'm me. Yeah. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. What do you think of that sax? I don't know how I feel. Just, just, just trying to figure, figure out if you like it or not. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of too jazzy for me right now. Yeah, it's too, too early. It makes me want to dance, which is dangerous. Yeah, you want that, to is see that. that is dangerous. All right, folks. Well, today is Wednesday, February 8, 2023. The sunrise today occurs at 6.45 a.m. and will set at 4.53 p.m., which means we have a, we've gained a little over 20 minutes of daylight in the past seven days. Wonderful. That's, that's good I news. love it. Bring yeah. it on. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's a sizable chunk. Yeah, that extra sunlight is certainly welcome for ice fishermen who like to get an early start. And everyone will have a chance to give the sport a try during a free fishing weekend that starts on February 18th this year. That's mm. when anyone can give ice fishing a try. You won't need a license, although you will have to abide by all the other state regulations. And if you've had your license revoked, you can't do that. But this is a good chance for um, people to get out and give it a try if you've ever wanted to. You don't have to go buy a license or that, that kind of cool. thing. Cool. So not I'll, this week. Weekend, but next weekend. Next weekend. Cool. Yeah. I want to get my daughter Natalie and her boyfriend Jacob out there. You yeah. know, that's something that you know for, for kids to get out there and enjoy. Hi, by the way. Um, <laughs> so we'll see if we can talk them into going. Um, it's one of those things you have to pass fishing. down. I mean, it's hard to break into stuff like that if you haven't done it yeah. before. I like to go a couple of times a winter. I know yep. some guys they'll live out there. I have some buddies yeah. up in Danforth. They're out there just about every day. But I don't blame it's them. It's a good thing to do during right. the during the winter. Breaks it up and yep. you know you're getting out, getting a little exercise. Right. It's eating socially, way too much. Yeah. <laughs> all the all the good things yeah. together. And if you catch a fish, that's an added plus. Right on. <laughs> okay, well, on this day in history, in 1910, the Boy Scouts of America is incorporated by William D. Boyce. So today's also National Boy Scouts Day. Mm -hmm. In 1928, the first ever transatlantic TV image was received in Hartsdale, New York. And in 1971, the NASDAQ Composite Stock Market Index debuted with, debuted with 50 companies and a starting value of 100. I don't know how many companies are a part of it right I now. Don't know. They started off pretty small, though. Right, right. And for birthdays, today we have writer John Grissom, still on my list. I haven't read any John Grissom, but I inherited a bunch from my grandmother. Yep. She was avid Grissom fan. Grissom, excuse me. And known for his thrillers like The Guardians and A Time to Kill. He's 68 today. Um, he d he has, I think, turned one of his books or the the research he did on one mm -hmm. of his books into a documentary. Or I may be confusing him with somebody else. He's had really a few cool. movies based on his books right, too. You know, right, right, very cool. Been around for a while. Yeah, a lot of books. Yeah. a lot, a lot of books. All right, and actor Ashton Kutcher is 45 today, and comedian Chris Rock is 58. Uh, happy birthday to them. Yeah. yeah. I like Ashton Kutcher. He's he's kind of funny. I know. I've yeah. never um, gotten tired of that 70s show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's good stuff. They have a new one, the 90s show. I, I don't know. know if you watched it. I'm scared to watch these new yeah. these new um, things. Like I watched that. about half of one. I'll, I'll give it another try. It didn't yep. really get me. Maybe I'm because I'm older now or something like that. I but, know. Well, I, yeah. I wonder how many times I still enjoy these things is because of the nostalgia. Right. Yeah. Um, I think that's part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, right now I'm watching King of the Hill, yep. and that's not the nostalgia. That just cracks me that's up just regularly. Funny, funny but stuff. I think that yeah. 70s show partially is also the nostalgia of watching yeah. it when growing up. But either way, it's a, it's a cool new show. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the weather. Not a bad stretch of weather at yeah. all. We'll see some sunshine over the next couple of days. Uh, very warm con conditions, too. I know. So for the ice fishers, I don't know. Hopefully it drops yeah. a little bit because the 40s tomorrow? 40s tomorrow yeah. also. Yep. Yeah. Devin Biggs has the details.
And thank you very much, Craig and Emma. Happy Wednesday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Century 21 Queen City Real Estate. Servicing the area for over 70 years. Experience matters. All right, here we go this morning. We are watching out for some small crowd advisories that are in effect. And this will last until about the 1 a.m. time frame. As we head towards your Thursday, the Wi-Fi is still remaining active along the coast with another system that has been passing through. And for now, things are starting to quiet down at the moment. So here's all the activity right here tracking from the west going toward the east. So we got some snow last night and early this morning. Now a lot of this is starting to calm down now. And we'll see the clouds break up today to reveal plenty of sunshine and temperatures that should be rather decent today too. In fact, we'll be melting a little bit more snow with some cool, with some warmer temperatures that will begin to move in soon. So decreasing clouds will be the general idea today. We'll be under a mostly clear sky later on tonight. So it'll be very nice to get outside and do things overall as long as you bundle up, of course, but the weather will remain calm. But as for the wind, it might be gusty from time to time. That might be the only obstacle, but even this will start to back off, especially as we head towards Thursday afternoon. So your forecast for today, lower 40s today, partly cloudy, rather mild and breezy out there. The northwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 15 degrees, mostly clear, still a little breezy out there. Northwest wind at about 20 miles per hour. Your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, decreasing clouds, temperatures reaching for 40. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Craig and Emma. Thank you, Devin. A brewer furniture maker is quite proud of the hundreds and even possibly thousands of pieces she's handcrafted and sold. Megan Smith makes dollhouse furniture, items that can fit in the palm of your hand. And as Jody Hersey tells us, this is one crafter who's proving smaller is better. I can remember being probably five, six years old, and one of the first real miniature things that I made was a bathroom for Barbie out of a tissue box. Megan Smith has come a long, long way since then. Smith, who considers herself a miniaturist, has created hundreds of dollhouse-sized bookshelves, tables, and other pieces of furniture with her own two hands. Some people are very organized and they will draw something out and figure out what they're doing. Uh, I sit down with a bunch of different bits and pieces and just start playing. Smith says there's a misconception around miniatures. There is a perception that miniatures are just for kids or for young people. And most of the clients that I, I work with are all adult collectors. I do a lot of what's called kit bashing, and that's when you get like a kit that already has some components that are cut out of the wood. And then I'll just use select pieces of that kit, and then I'll add other things to it. Besides using wood and kit pieces to create her minis, Smith also adds working hardware to many of her items. I try to make sure that everything uh, works and if it, if, you know, if it has, um, like this has hinges on it and so I want that to be something that you can actually fold and interact with because I think that's, that's part of the fun of minis is having something in a small scale that's still functioning the way that it's intended to. Smith says creating these handheld miniatures is not only a creative outlet, but a therapeutic hobby as well. It's amazing how having a hobby and like a positive outlet is so good for us. It's a really great thing and I wish more people got into it. In Brewer, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Smith's work can be seen at the main three railers train and dollhouse show at the Augusta Armory on February 18th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Boy, she does amazing work, too. I know, yeah. and that's a really special thing for kids and yeah. people. I, I know I have held on to mine since I was a kid. Hopefully yeah. I'll give it they're to really my kids. They're really works of art, each yeah, one of them. Yeah, you know? they're beautiful. Yeah. Good for her. Well, when we return, Tyler Cruz will have the latest with sports. Don't go away. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Drinkwater's Cash Fuel, Gateway Title of Maine, Lincoln Color Center, Overhead Door Company of Bangor, Rowell's Garage and Car Wash, and Vale's Cakes. Spend an evening with James Taylor and his all-star band. The American Icon is back on tour June 27th at Maine Savings Amphitheater. 
the multiple Grammy Award winning James Taylor and a night full of his biggest hits. Tickets on sale Friday at 10 a.m. at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Spend the night with a friend, James Taylor. Bring them all. If only there was a place in the morning to start my day. With a smile, somewhere to help me get in the know. A place as spectacular as, well, me. Hmm, I think we might know a place, right, guys? Bring your friends. Oh, wait, there is. Good morning, America. GMA, 7A, every day. Boom. 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 Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, America. How are you? Boom. Now that's how you start your day, people. The Hudson University Eagles take on the Maine Maritime Academy Mariners in a basketball doubleheader this Saturday, starting at 1 on ABC7. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We will start on the hardwood. Maine men's basketball has won 10 games for the first time in a decade. Ryan Sudol has more. It's hard to win at this level, especially in conference. And for us to go out there and win how we did, I think it showed how you know good we can be. On Saturday, Maine men's basketball had their largest conference win in 30 years, defeating UMBC by 35 points. Any win we get right now, uh, you know, you're building confidence. We just got to continue on that path, continue to focus on getting better and working at the things that produce winning. That method has worked out well thus far. With that UMBC win, the Black Bears now have won 10 games for the first time in 10 years. It just means we're moving things in the right direction, which is where we want to be. You know, we, we still have a long ways to go. We got a lot of hard work in front of us. Keep grinding every day and, and see how far we can take it. They've gotten this far off the heels of a few first year guys. Not just Coach Markwood, but transfers like the nation steals leader, Kellen Tynes. It feels great, you know, I think, you know, there's definitely some change that's starting to happen, you know, with the men's program around here. So, you know, to be a part of a, a special team in a special place, it, it really means a lot. Getty Yusupitis is another. The fifth year guard is the team's highest scorer, and he doesn't regret becoming a black bear at all. Mark was just doing a great job uh, teaching, coaching, just kind of getting guys together. I love playing here. If I could play more years, I would. The on-court action isn't the only thing trending up. So is the support from the local community. You know, I speak to people around town and they say, like, we're making the town proud and stuff like that. And, you know, to hear that means a lot to me, means a lot to the guys. You know, we play every game for, for the university, for the fans and for us. And what a win it would be for all of them if the Black Bears can beat Vermont, the top team in the America East, on Wednesday night. We just want to keep playing our best basketball. And no, no better opportunity to do it than against Vermont. I think it's going to show that uh, we're resilient, we're a tough team, and you know we can compete with just about anybody in the conference. In Orono, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. And let's stay with some hoops now, and we will begin our high school coverage for the night. One last week of the regular season, let's go to some Class AA girls action. Over at Red Barry Gym, Bangor girls trying to finish out the season strong. This could be a quarterfinal matchup right here. Rams hosting the Red Eddies. And then watch this. Right off the tip, Bangor starts it off. Abby Quinn to Taylor Coombs. That's an easy two right out of the gate for the senior and then it's Emmy Streams on the drive. A nice little bounce pass here to Quinn. Smooth as butter with the left. But here come the Eddies. Rachel Penny gets it on the outside and she is money from three right there. But look at this play to end the quarter. Bangor forces the turnover on the double team. Streams turns on the Jets. She gets the friendly roll at the buzzer. Bangor wins it 55 to 36. Let's move to the stable now. Hamden Academy hosting Lewiston. Broncos band loud and proud for the girls' senior night. Let's start things off in the second quarter. Corral Marin with a nice move to the hoop off the glass for two. And then check out this play from the Broncos. Bella McLaughlin, she's going to force the steal right there. And then on the other end, she is just going to clean up that miss for two. Nice move from the Providence Friars commit right there. Broncos up big before the half, but the Blue Devils fighting. Marin again, step back three. She's got it, all three of those. And then at the end of the half, McLaughlin picks off the inbound, pulls up for three, splashes it home at the horn. Broncos win it 66 to 42. 
All right, now to Pittsfield we go, where MCI Boys Hoops host Mount View in a crucial matchup for the Huskies' playoff chances. Let's start third quarter. MCI's Lucas Yagastera with a sweet no-look pass to Owen Moore. He uses his side, it size inside to get it to go. Later, Mustangs with it. Here's Tyler Russell pulling up from the left wing. Nails that three-pointer right there. Mount View up 11, but the Huskies would come back in the force. Yagastera, fourth. Yagastera using his speed, forces his way to the hole. That one ties it at 48 with just under four to go. Minute later, Evanson again. He's on the break. Watch the scoop layup through a couple of Husky defenders. Mount View holds on, and they hang on to win 58-52. to all right, let's look at some other scores from around the night. Gardner over Lawrence in a big Class A matchup, 53-44. Herman getting a win over Halton in overtime. Hamden Academy boys beating Lewiston in overtime down in Lewiston. And then Madden Nawcook edging out Sumner, 55-53. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. At Living Innovations, we build community. You can be a part of it. We put supporting people first, and that builds a caring community within our workforce and for the people we serve. Living Innovations supports people with disabilities and has flexible work opportunities available. You could become a shared living provider and work from home, or help support people to be active in the community. To learn more, visit livinginnovations.com and check out our employment and home provider opportunities. Become a part of Living Innovations and be part of a community with a purpose. Bangor Floral is your perfect destination this February. Since 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful Valentine's Day gifts for almost 100 years. Featuring new colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets that have warmed hearts for generations. We also strongly support the Buy Local movement by purchasing directly from local farms and suppliers. Bangor Floral, 332 Harlow Street. Experience a flower shop like no other this February. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Bangor Tire Company, Black's Heat Pumps, First National Bank, Patriot Homes, Ray Plumbing and Heating, and Tony Murray's Fairway Auto Sales. The big game is expected to bring in big bets. Fox Business Network's David Ashman has that story and more in Fox Means Business. Well, another tech company laying off workers, Zoom, says it's going to cut about 1,300 jobs or 15 percent of its workforce as demand for its services has slowed. The company also announcing plans to trim base pay for executives. Stocks climbing on Tuesday as investors hope for a soft landing for the economy after Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said inflation is declining and rates will likely need to keep rising as the job market remains strong. As anticipation for Super Bowl Sunday grows, so does the amount of betting on the big game. According to the American Gaming Association, over 50 million Americans are expected to wager around $16 billion on the Super Bowl. That's a 61 percent jump from last year. If you're still looking for a special place to celebrate Valentine's Day, you might want to consider San Francisco. A new survey by WalletHub ranks the city by the bay as the most romantic and affordable town to spend with your Valentine. Seattle and San Diego round out the top three. That's business. I'm David Asman. Now here's meteorologist Evan Biggs with our full weather forecast. Alrighty, Craig and Emma, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Century 21 Queen City Real Estate, servicing the area for over 70 years. Experience matters. Already, small craft advisories are in effect until about 1 a.m. as we head towards your Thursday along the coast. Things are still active this morning. That's causing some gusty winds and some active surf as a result. That will continue tonight before it starts to back off early tomorrow morning. But for now, we had some snow that's recently passed through, so we got a little bit out of this. And now this is starting to get out of here. And now the clouds are going to break up, and pretty much what's fallen is going to melt. It's going to be seeing temperatures reaching above freezing today. In fact, getting close to 40 degrees as a result. So you know this cold front's moving through. High pressure will be moving in, pushing the clouds out of here. And that sunshine will allow temperatures to boost up into the lower 40s, so that will feel rather nice. So future cast for today decreasing clouds will be the general idea we'll be under a mostly clear sky later on tonight and even through
to tomorrow. Looking pretty good to start things off with a lot of sunshine, but more clouds on the way for the afternoon period as another system starts to approach by about 6 o'clock or so. And this one could bring us some snow that could switch over to a little bit of rain as we head towards early Friday morning. Here's a bigger look at that picture of those. So it's going to move in from the southwest to the north and east by about 6 o'clock or so. We'll start seeing us moving in. Switching over to rain as temperatures will rise overnight to above freezing. But notice by Friday afternoon, at least through Friday morning, we'll still see a few rain showers possible. But Friday afternoon, this will all start to back off. And by Friday night, we will be done with that system. So it will be a quick mover. Not a lot of snow with this right now. Maybe a one to two inches in most areas before we're all finished up. You have to go further off towards the north and see maybe up to three to four, maybe up to five inches in a few spots, but not as much over our area with that transition over to rain. And speaking of rainfall as well, this takes into account any, any snow that falls down. And of course, this takes into, into account the water equivalent of that. So in general, a half inch of water in general before we're all finished up. So not a lot of stuff to get excited about here, but a little bit more water on the way with the snowpack we have on the ground already. Can't rule out some flash flooding in some areas either. Six to ten foot wave heights being noted right now. This is why we have small crowd advisories in effect at this time. Your forecast for today, 40 degrees, partly cloudy, mild and breezy. Northwest wind at about 25 miles per hour. Later on tonight, 15 degrees, mostly clear and breezy out there again. Northwest wind at about 20 miles per hour. And for tomorrow, 38 degrees, mostly cloudy again. The west wind at about 5 miles per hour. All right, here's a look at your extended forecast brought to you by Century 21 Queen City Real Estate. Of course, we have that wintry mix switching over to all rain Thursday night. By Friday morning, a few morning rain showers that will be done by Friday afternoon. Temperatures reaching for the lower 50s. That'll be rather mild. Mid-30s by Saturday with a partly cloudy sky. And partly cloudy again on Sunday. Highs in the upper 30s. Living in Maine, many things stick with you throughout your life. If you're far from home or you're missing those things, then Box of Maine is for you. Shipping nationwide for corporate businesses or individuals, Box of Maine gives everyone their own personal taste of our great state. And a portion of every box we sell goes directly to local nonprofits. Have you visited the gift shop yet? Filled to the brim with everything you find in our boxes, you can pick what you need or even create your own box. Stop by for perfect Maine gifts today at Box of Maine. Before and bath fitter. Before and bath fitter. If you have a before bath, now's the time to call bath fitter to get a beautiful after. With our unique tub over tub process, there's no mess or stress. Spend smart on a beautiful new bath done right, backed by a lifetime warranty. Join over 2 million happy customers who know it just fits. Bath fitter. Visit bathfitter.com to book your free consultation. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox 22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Arts Service Center, Coach House Restaurant, Coastal Auto Parts, Newport Glass LLC, the Bangor UPS Store, and the Farmer's Table. went to Angie and typed in pool, water heater, cleaners, garage, interior painting, exterior painting. For whatever project you need, there's an option. Oh, I have another project. Let me try this. Get started at Angie.com today. What is going on with you? Since I've been writing obituaries, I've been stuck in my head. We were the same age. Yeah, except you got old and you died. I know. Super sadsies. Well, when it comes to your mental health, using your unique touches in your home may help keep you more emotionally happy. A home survey by IKEA says decorating your home to reflect your own personality may help keep you more mentally healthy. 37,000 people in 37 different countries responded to the survey. Those who think their homes represent their individual individuality were one and a half times more likely to enjoy their homes. Respondents who liked their own home design more often said what they owned was more important than where they lived. Makes sense, too. Yeah, That's yeah. it for now, folks. We thank you for joining us. Have a good day. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Here's this week's featured deal. 
Pat's Pizza in Holden is not just a restaurant that serves delicious food and pizza. They also have an adjacent party and event room. Consider having your birthday or office party at Pat's Pizza. They have indoor golf, a pro shop, and a beautiful nine-hole golf course. Pat's Pizza, Holden. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m. A limited supply available half-off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. It's high school basketball season, and ABC7 and Fox22 are here to keep you up to date with your local scores and highlights during Friday night fast break. Get out and support your hometown teams and look for our sports crew to get your own free Friday night fast break t-shirt courtesy of Carl's Auto Parts, Sear North Star Tours, Graphic Signs and Design, Main Collision Center, Rick Burpee State Farm Insurance Agent, and Stakes and Stuff. I never get the flu.